Hey, this is Nicholas with the Backyard Tardis here with another Top 10, this time Top 10 Space Sci-Fi TV Shows. So, a couple of ground rules, no Earth-based stuff, so, uh, you know, no, um, no stuff that, uh, it needs to be a space-faring thing, um, so no Twilight Zone or something like that, um, and it, uh, we're looking at we're looking at sci-fi, so not 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 fantasy. It can have fantasy elements, but it's it's got to be a sci-fi show set in space. And uh, full disclosure, certain things I haven't seen. I haven't seen Farscape. I haven't seen Babylon Five. I know I need to go back and I need to see those. So those very well could uh, supplant something on this list uh, when I eventually do watch it. But these are based on my opinions from what I've seen. So number ten. Space 1999. Now this is a, a show that I've only recently started watching. And that is because it seems like all of a sudden it's a resurgence. Everybody's talking about it. And right off the bat, like, it has heart. It has a lot of heart. It's got, you know, good acting. Um, I just really like it. I wish more more things did this, this level. So, um... It's, it's definitely, it's made my list. Now, number nine uh, is Flash Gordon. Flash Gordon! Yes. the I, I, I love this franchise. Um, I, would, I would love to see it given the proper treatment today. Uh, unfortunately, you know, that, that, it's really hard for them to go back and do something like this because as much as I want them to give the proper treatment today, I want them to do it... Uh, in the time period it was originally written because that is a whole part of the charm and I've only seen bits and pieces of different uh, recently um, looking back at the show there's been a number of iterations of the show um, I did watch the 2007 reboot it was okay but it didn't do it the justice that I want done for this show number eight on a similar line uh, what's better than uh, Flash Gordon? It's Buck Rogers. Buck Rogers is the original. He's what Flash Gordon was made to compete with. And Buck Rogers, uh, costume designs, just, just aesthetic. It's a fun adventure show. And it's been a number of fun adventure shows. And uh, I would I would also, one that I would love to see make a comeback, they, these Two shows specifically, you know, they helped inspire a lot of the other sci-fi that's on this list. And for that, they hold a special place as a property there. Number seven, Lost in Space. I uh, I ate Lost in Space up as a kid. I loved that show. And um, it's it's one that... Uh, now, the, the Netflix reboot, it's really good. It's a really great show. But if you're expecting that old show to be there, it's it's not that. It's not it, it, it barely resembles that in concept, but it's also an amazing show. So, but the the Lost in Space franchise, the Danger Will Robinson, uh, the, the robot. I love the robot um, Smith. Yeah, so many good things about um, Lost in Space. Now we come to number six, Battlestar Galactica. Now I am, I have not seen all of the original. I've only seen a little bit of that. I, I, another one, it's on my list. It's on my list. But the when they rebooted that on Sci-Fi Channel, it was amazing. Like it was gorgeous. The drama really sucked you in. And it had a huge effect on the world of sci-fi, for better or for worse. I, I feel like everything tried to imitate it, and that was a downside. Because everything couldn't be Battlestar Galactica. It's an amazing show. Okay, number five. This one didn't used to be able to be on this list, but Star Wars. The Mandalorian is amazing. This is what I've wanted from Star Wars since the original trilogy. I'll take the Mandalorian over the prequel trilogy, sequel trilogy, the other movie. It feels like Star Wars to me. And it's giving adventure in that, uh, you know, Moss Eisley, criminal underworld type. Love it. Love it. Um, number four, Firefly. It ended too soon. 
Nathan Fillion is brilliant. The whole cast is great and amazing in this show. Um, and would love love to see anything that they go into because they're such amazing actors. It was kind of just the storm of everything that came together. But the world that was created, the idea that, you know, they're part of the losing side of a war. That everybody speaks in uh, Chinese. So when they get angry with each other, they, they break out into Chinese because that's the universal language. Even though our characters know English, like the universal language had been Chinese. So many things like that uh, were just nice little touches. Interesting world. Would love to go back and revisit it, whether it would be a reunion show or movie, or if it's just a spin-off show that some of our characters could occasionally guest star on. Um, Firefly needs to come back. Number three. Now we're getting into the difficult, because the top three are all almost interchangeable for me. But number three is Stargate. I love Stargate. The concept of Stargate, the worlds, the going through, the banter, uh, the team aspect, love it. Uh, so many characters that I love. You've got the original team, Jack, Carter, Daniel Jackson. I love Daniel Jackson. Um, I tried, you know, I have a daughter, but I told my wife we have a son. We got to name him Daniel Jackson. <laughs> and um, she was like, well, maybe we could compromise on Jackson Daniel. But uh, that's that's totally, a, uh, I love that character. Um, Teal'c, Sam, love these characters. Um, I love Ball, my favorite ghoul. There's so many things that I love about this. Um, and then Atlantis came out and it was like lightning struck twice. Shepard, McKay, Taylor, Ford, um, Ronan, like, I, I loved these characters. So amazing. Just so much to love. And uh, Woolsey, you know, Stargate. And then you have a species like Asgard. You know, people love the MCU Thor. My Thor will always be Thor, the supreme commander of the Asgard fleet from Stargate. Love Stargate. Number two, Doctor Who. Doctor Who is such an amazing sci-fi property because you can go anywhere, anytime, do anything you want, uh, whatever the budget needs. You can you can do period pieces, you can do modern day, you can go to fantastical alien worlds, and it just tells such great stories. And what's amazing about Doctor Who is it reinvents itself with each new Doctor and with each new companion. Every time a new companion is added to the show, it's a jumping on point. You have a new person experiencing everything for the first time being explained to them as they see it because they don't understand what's going on. Amazing thing. Uh, new doctors have different flavors. They're very vastly different in personality from each other. And so Doctor Who is really, uh, if you're not into it and you tried to give it a chance and you didn't like it, you probably just haven't found your doctor. Let me know. Tell me some of your tastes. I'll put together a list. Because once you find your doctor and you fall in love with the show, you gain a respect for all the other doctors, even if maybe they're not your favorite. Okay. I'm Backyard Tardis. What's beating out Doctor Who? What's not on this list yet? It's Star Trek. Star Trek is probably the biggest TV franchise in, in sci-fi history. It, it, it eclipses everything else. It's amazing. And... I love TOS, James T. Kirk, all that. But, you know, I'm, of course, a kid of the Next Generation era, and that continuation of Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Voyager, I love that. So for me, you know, I, I, um, I've always, of course, loved Kirk, loved Spock, McCoy, uh, you know, Sulu, Chekhov, Scotty, her. Uh, those, of course, are always going to be legendary. But for me, the ones I watched over and over again were stuff with like Data and LaForge and Riker, stuff with, um, you know, Quark and Odo. I love that. And, and Garrick. And those were always some good uh, things. And then, of course, you know, you, you've got to love um, Tom Paris and the throwbacks, uh, you know, as Captain Proton. 
um, the Doctor. Probably my favorite character in all of Star Trek is the Doctor. Robert Picardo is an amazing gift to sci-fi, and I want him in everything. I want him in Star Wars. Make him a droid or alien in Star Wars uh, shows, Disney+. Plus, Because he has such nerd cred between Stargate and, and Star Trek. And, and he's in a fantastical actor. But Star Trek, just the spirit from the very first show of mankind doing better, going out, strange new worlds, exploring, and everyone getting along, um, that we've worked through those silly problems, and then we go out into space and find new major problems. I love that. I wish... I, I see a lot of the new newer stuff, and it feels like they're getting a little sidetracked on that. I like... Um, messaging in my Star Trek. Star Trek has always had messaging. But I liked the messaging of belief that if you're pushing for these things, we're going to get to that world where we overcome come these hurdles rather than seeing the hurdles of today still existing in the future. So I think, um, you know, those first, um, first four shows for me are just amazing. But of course... These other shows, they have their own merit. They bring in their own fans. So whatever your Star Trek is, that's your Star Trek. Love it. Amazing franchise. So what is my uh, secret number 11? That is going to be V. Uh, v got disqualified from this list because it doesn't truly take place in space. Though it is invaders coming from space. And um, it's just one of those shows that it's such an interesting premise the idea of these lizard people but they're disguised as humans really cool thing both the classic and then the reboot one was done really well uh it's one of the few times you know like battlestar galactic where i really feel like they 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 knocked the reboot out of the park usually i'm against a reboot i'd rather stuff stay canonical in universe with 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 the classic old sci-fi like doctor who star trek and Stargate and stuff like that. They, they continue to stay in line uh, with the canon. Um, but this was a reboot that I definitely got behind because they did such an amazing job and I was very sad when it got canceled. So that's my uh, top 10 space sci-fis. Are there some I missed? Um, what, what ones do you think should be on there? Maybe uh, Farscape, Andromeda, Babylon 5. These are all other ones that uh, are some people's favorites. Let me know down in the comments below and have a good day.